agent might say, but Lori, it takes money to bring in leads into my business, or I can't do lead gen without pouring money into maybe Zillow. You as a new agent, first of all, I know there are a lot of agents that believe in Zillow. I'm not one of those agents. I actually did a very expensive experiment for my agents that I train, and I signed up for Zillow. It was awful, it was a waste of money. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of The Agent Goldmine, where today, Shelby and I are interviewing Lori Santaseri. And you may have heard her name as she's been on HGTV, Bravo, and Tampa Bay's The Morning Blend. She's out in the Tampa area. She coaches new agents on how to build their business with little to no money. And in this episode, specifically, there are so many good takeaways, unconventional ways to build your business, again, at very little cost. Now, she loves doing client appreciation events. You're going to hear all about her strategy there all about how tax season can help you bring in more business and really just a lot, a lot of tips, especially some safety tips toward the end. So reach out. She's also looking to network with more professionals in the local area. So if you're an agent in Tampa, reach out to her and hope you enjoy today's show. Okay, Lori. So you might hear this where a new agent might say, but Lori, it takes money to bring in leads into my business, or I can't do lead gen without pouring money into maybe Zillow. That could be the only option for me. So Lori, what do you say to me? You as a new agent, first of all, I know there are a lot of agents that believe in Zillow. I'm not one of those agents. I actually did a very expensive experiment for my agents that I train, and I signed up for Zillow. It was awful. It was a waste of money, but it was a nice little experience that I was able to speak intelligently on and not just, you know, say, Hey, I don't like it without ever trying it. So I don't like Zillow. I know some people do what I enjoy doing and what a lot of agents have been very successful at with me training them is door knocking. But there again, are a lot of agents that are like, you will not catch me knocking on somebody's door. Holy cow. That's terrifying. I can't do that. Um, to which I respond to them. I said, what's the biggest thing you're scared of? And people are like spiders or whatever. Do you think that person's going to open the door and throw a handful of spiders at you? Like, it's not that terrifying. So, but some of the things that I do that are kind of you know, much different than other agents is I send out a happy anniversary mailers, not only to the people that I have helped, but I go into the MLS and I have the agents pull up listings that closed a year ago. And I have them write a handwritten happy anniversary mailer. And it just simply says, hey, um, Joe, happy anniversary in your new home. I hope you're enjoying the neighborhood. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Because their agents are not doing it. Their agents are not following up with them. They're collecting that commission check and disappearing. So for you to touch on that, and they get so excited when they pull up a list of homes. And they're like, I have you know, 18 that have closed in a, a year. And they see that six of them are already back on the market. And it's like those people do sell within a year. So I have gotten listings that way because people have called and be like, oh, you know, thank you for this. This was very sweet. And it was great timing because we're actually thinking about putting the house on the market. And that's free. You pay for the postage of the handwritten card that you send out and that's it. And I have my agents do that every Monday. They're going on and checking who closed a year ago and sending those things out. Another thing that they can do if they just don't want to do like a a cold mailer, they can reach out to them at the beginning of the year, which I have my people doing right now um, because they have the closing statement. And that closing statement that you got when you bought or sold a house, you need that for your taxes. So they're reaching out to people right now saying, hey, I know you bought a house in 2023. Do you have your closing statement, your Ulta statement? Because your accountant's going to need that. And if they say no, because Missouri, I'm like, I don't know where it's at. Okay, well, I see here in the MLS that Majesty Title was the title company you used. I will reach out to them on your behalf and I'll get that for you with your email address. And they're just tickled pink that you're providing that value to them. And again, that is free. That that is so smart. And and I also know that Josh Smith out like up in the Phoenix area, he tells his agents to do I hope I'm not like maybe I misinterpreted it, but I know that on a podcast he said before where if a list if a buyer's agent can't go and physically drop off the keys like at the day of closing, you know, to the clients. So like if the clients are going to be at the house, 
Sometimes they ask the listing agents to do that. And sometimes listing agents feel a little bit weird about doing it, but that is the perfect time to congratulate the buyer clients, even though it wasn't their clients saying, Hey, congratulations. Like you're like the messenger of good news, you know? And therefore you start like a relationship with them because a lot of agents will we still have that mentality of, okay, the transaction's closed. They are now a past client and it gets into like a different bucket in their head when really it should be a forever client. And that's like where I think Josh Smith was coming from. Like, Hey, like meet them, you know, like, yes, it's okay to, to give the keys to the buyer clients that were not your clients. If you're representing the listing, that's so, that's so interesting. Yeah. I feel like a lot of agents sleep on that. Yeah. And I think a lot of things get misconstrued as well, where they're like, Oh, they're represented. No, no, it's closed. That representation ended when that closing happened. And that's typically how the other agent acts as well. Oh, I got my commission check relationship over. So I'm glad that you mentioned Josh doing that because if I'm the listing agent, I'm following up with those buyers two weeks after closing, giving them that same information. Here's a folder on information about the property. My clients forgot to leave it. Also, I put your Ulta statement in there that you're going to need for your tax purposes. So, you know, I'm Lori. Let me know if you need anything. I was a listing agent here, blah, blah, blah. I have a listing that's going on the market next week from me doing that five years ago that I was a listing agent on. Wow. Like okay. It's, it's very helpful. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay. So you follow up with them, you know, two weeks after what does your follow-up look like from then? Like what's your tempo? So when I first touch base with like, again, if I'm the listing agent and it's the buyer that I did not represent that purchased the house, I'm going back, I'm door knocking. Hi, I'm Lori. I was the listing agent on this house when you bought the home. They're like, Oh, hi Lori. How are you? I'm like, how's everything going? I know that, you know, my clients had to fix the leaky faucet. How's it holding up? You know? And they're like, Oh, great. If they're like, Oh, I'm so glad you asked, you know, we haven't been able to get a hold of our realtor. It's still leaking. Okay. No problem. What's a good day for you. I'll send the plumber back over. You know, like it's not a, Oh, that sucks. Your agent's awful. Blah, blah, blah. You know, who do you know? Refer somebody to me. No, it's like, okay, I'm coming from a place of value. Get the plumber back over there. If nothing's wrong, it's just, okay, well, I wanted to stop by, see how things are going. Here's the folder with additional information about the house and the neighborhood. Here's your trash pickup days. Here's uh, things to remember. It's the same thing that I give my buyers when they close. Like, here's your trash pickup days. Don't forget to do your forwarding address. Change your address on your Amazon account to make sure that your packages are going to where they're supposed to be going. Big thing, change the locks. You do not know who had a key to this house. So you're providing that value right off the bat and giving them that closing disclosure for their tax purposes that's printed out. And they they love it. They love that folder. And of course, my card's in there. <laughs> but it's just a, a nice way to show the appreciation to them, not only as the buyer for the house, but as a consumer in general, and to let them know that you're there for them. This is so interesting. Okay. So you do the two weeks after closing, you send the Alta, the home details, then how, I missed it. How long until you door knock? Or is that kind of and that's for, the two so that I believe I thought the first one was an email. Okay. That is the two weeks. Okay. Yeah. And then at that point, you know, you've provided value to them. How are you continuing to stay in touch over the year? You mentioned someone just, you're listing someone that, you know, you talked to five years ago. So like, give us more. This is really good info. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so for that person, that was a little bit easier because she moved into my neighborhood. So I market to my neighborhood. So she sees all my marketing material as well, but I'm probably like most people that I pay attention to my neighbors and we know them based on their dog. <laughs> hey, that's, that's the one that is Jenny's mom. You know, like we know the dog before we know the person. So for these individuals, we, we had a, a kind of a relationship already built a little bit because they came into the open house when I had it listed and um, they told me about their kids, their dog, all that stuff. So of course, when they moved in, it was easy to go and introduce myself. Now, for somebody that doesn't live in my neighborhood, it's just somebody that I represented the listing. I typically get their email address and I add them to my drip campaign for my emails. That way for my client appreciation events, even though they were not technically a client, they get invited. So I have extensive and very expensive client appreciation events to where I had to start inviting my accountant and his daughter. So he knew that I wasn't just fitting on how much I spend on these things. But like I bring out Santa. Santa has gifts for everybody. My photographer comes out and does professional photos with Santa. 
We do the same for Easter next year. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tampa. We have something called Gasparilla here and it's like Tampa's Mardi Gras. It's a good time. Holy cow. If you guys ever find yourself in Tampa in January, you have to come. It's like the most interesting experience. We'll just put it that way. So next year I, I will have a float in the parade and that will be my client appreciation event for my clients that want to come out and be on the float and party and stuff. So, but they do get added to that jerk campaign to be invited to all those events I kind of, I try to get as much information about them, like their their birthdays or their kids' birthdays, just in casual conversation. They get birthday cards, they get Thanksgiving cards, Christmas cards. Like most agents will do a text. I actually send stuff in the mail. I'm a firm believer in handwritten communication. I'm curious about you. So you said something that a lot of I hear agents talk about all the time. My drip campaign. I need to get campaigns. I need that because none of them, I feel like have them, but all of them know that they should be doing this thing. So could you talk about what you send out to your, first of all, what database do you use? And then what all do you send out on your campaigns? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. So I use Constant Contact, which I'm a a big fan of. It's easy to use. Um, Like I said, I'm kind of technology inclined, (laughs) Um, but Constant Contact is very easy for me to maneuver through. And I, I used to send out correspondence every week. And it got just a little too much for me. So now I send it out every month and I'll do like certain areas, like there'll be a tab for, it's all data information. It's not, look at me, look what I just sold. Look what I just went under contract. They don't care. Nobody gives a shit. So you got to put the stuff in there that people care about. And that's data. That's data that they can't find online, data that is harder to find online or data that they're just too damn lazy to go and find themselves online. So I put little clickable links on there of like houses that are currently for sale in South Tampa, houses currently for sale in Brandon, and then so on, so on, so on. Houses currently pending in those same areas. So they can kind of click on them and houses that have sold. And Constant Contact lets you see who clicks which links. So if you have somebody that's looking at like what's sold, they're like, okay, they just kind of want to maybe know the market or maybe they're interested in selling. If it's a potential buyer client and they're looking on what's available, okay, that gives me the cue to reach out to them and just say hello, kind of see how they're doing and you know, kind of know what they're thinking about or possibly thinking about without calling and bombarding them with you know stupid real estate questions that nobody wants. How much is that? Constant contact. I I just renewed it. I think it's I think it's. 400 for the year. And you get to send out, I think it's 5,000 emails for the year, which I never hit that mark, but it's it's nice to have. Yeah. It's nice to have because I seriously just do my email and hit send and it shows my open rate, who's opened it, who's unsubscribed, which nobody has ever unsubscribed. So I'm doing something right. And I put like another link in there that has like the beach cam So I do have clients that click on it before they go to the beach to see what the beach looks like. (laughs) If it's busy, if it's, you know, whatever. Oh, that is so So. smart. Oh, thank you. What? (laughs) That's brilliant. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, that that is so smart. Okay. (laughs) That's all I had to say. (laughs) That's brilliant. (laughs) I want to look at it right now. (laughs) I'm going to start adding you to my my trip campaign just so you can see what the beach looks like. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What, what else does your drip campaign look like? So I do like for the the main photo that has it on there, like most of it's just the data, but you have to scroll down to look at it. So I'll do like pet of the week, local restaurant of the week as like the highlight on top. I don't do listing of the month or again, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like I'm more prone to look at an email that has the pet of the week than I am to look at an email. It's like, here's the listing of the week. And the listing of the week is always an ultra high luxury that nobody can afford, right? Like just the top 1%. So I think with the the data information on there, as opposed to the look at me type content, it's just been very helpful. And then of course, when we have storms come through, the beginning of hurricane season is, hey, hurricane season is upon us. It starts this day, it ends this day. Of course, Floridians know that, but there's a lot of people that move here from out of state that are on my database. So that one has the same information, but I add, here's vendors you might need. Here's an electrician, here's a plumber, here's a roofer, here's hurricane shutter installation. That way, if they need that stuff before hurricane season actually kicks off, they have it right there available to them. I'm I'm very big on value-driven 
information as opposed to, you know, it, it annoys me when I see agents do the, the looky looky, you know, information. <laughs> yeah. Carrying on with this beach cam. <laughs> How did, you get, how did you get the link? Like, I mean, it's so brilliant because like, okay, say I were your client, you know, like, and, and I was a buyer and I purchased with you or, or you're the listing agent, whatever. I'm now going to the beach because I have a day off and I'm on like constantly reminded of you like, oh, what's Lori's link? So I can take a look at what the beach looks like before I want to go. Is it too crazy today? Is it too rowdy? Are the, are the waves high? Where did you get that link? How did you get that set up? It's, it's very easy. You just Google Clearwater Beach Cam <laughs> and you can find it. It's wow. very easy. Yeah. And I have one. So a girlfriend of mine, her business has a, it, it's a beach cam, but it, it doesn't overlook the beach. It overlooks Bayshore Boulevard which is where the gas roller parade takes place. So the one that's going out will have that camera along with the beach camera so people can click on it and see the parade from that view instead of having to watch the news. Yo, know, if Tucson has anything like this, I mean, I don't even know what it would be, <laughs> like of a mountain, you know, like a rock. Like, well, I wonder what we here's have, if nest. anything. Yeah. Yeah, here's a javelina, like a wild boar, which would be super cool, <laughs> but that's like the most exciting I think that we would have. <laughs> This is cool. Okay. Shelby, do you have anything else before I switch the conversation a little? <laughs> no, no, pivot from the beach cam. I think, yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. I mean, you're good. Allie's not. Allie wants to be more. Allie wants to be at it just so she can see the beach cam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I miss water, <laughs> but okay. So you, you hit them and how often are these emails going out? So like I said, they were once a week. I did once a week for almost a year, and now they're once a month. Okay. And then on top of that, you have your client appreciation, your, you know, Santa, and what other holidays aside from like the the winter? So I do Easter as well. So I either hire an actor to play the Easter Bunny or I make my husband do it. He loves it. (laughs) And all the kids, the parents have to RSVP for it because all the kids get a personalized Easter basket. And it has a bunch of stuff in it that has their name on it. One year I didn't have time to put the name. So I just put like little cards in there with their names on it. But again, the photographers out there doing professional photos, we have an Easter egg hunt. I have food and I make sure to do all these events like two weeks before the actual holiday. So if they want to you know, post photos or make cards or something to send out to people and it works out well, because my photographer gets me the photos less than 24 hours after the event. So this Past year, I didn't get to do Santa because we had some funk going around. Everybody got sick. So instead, I sent Santa to my kids' school, and it was a huge hit. Like, I walked in to say hi to Santa, and I had so many kids walk out. There's a real Santa here. <laughs> so that was that was so cute to see them just, like, freak out over Santa. It was awesome. For Halloween, I do a halloween theme one. It just so happens to work out that I always have a listing go on the market at Halloween. So I do a huge Halloween open house. I hire actors again to play princesses and Batman. We do a costume contest for the kids. I give out little goodie bags full of candy for the kids. And for the adults, we have mimosas available to them. And it's always a good time. You hire princesses and Batman. Dude, I want to go. It sounds freaking (laughs) legit. And it's, it's not okay. that expensive, so it works out. Yeah. Okay, so we have we have client appreciation. We have the drips. We have the follow-up with the listing agent. Before we pivot away from marketing and lead generation, is there anything else that jumps to your mind that you're like, I want to share this? Not really. I feel like we shared it in the beginning with the, the things that don't cost any money, providing them with their closing disclosure that they need for taxes. If you, like for my clients... If they close, you know, anywhere between January 1st and December 24th, they all get a personalized ornament in January or in December. That's like you know, either our first home or our new home personalized with the year and their dates. And I go and meet with them and drop that off to them. It costs me 15 bucks um, per ornament. So it's worth it. And then closing gifts, I do personalized paintings of the house that they purchased. So no cutting boards. I love no that. cutting boards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the personalization personalization words. Good job. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Been practicing. So you have you have like a lot of 
you know, different, especially event planning. So I plan events and I know it can be time consuming. And you mentioned writing the kids' names on the Easter baskets and all that stuff. So do you have an assistant who's helping you in the back end? Like what does the rest besides Lori, what does the rest of your business look like? So I have a transaction coordinator who also kind of doubles as my assistant. She does a lot of work outside of just a TC. She is licensed, so that makes it very helpful. So she takes care of all my compliance and paperwork so I can do things like this. As far as planning the events, it's me, myself, and I. And every year before an event, I'm pulling my hair out and I tell my husband, this is the last time I'm doing this. I'm not doing this ever again. And that's a lie. (laughs) So it is just me, myself, and I, but I plan them so far in advance that I'm not getting like too overwhelmed. And since I've been doing it for so long, I use the same vendors. Um, So I forgot to mention the Santa event also has a snow cone truck. So it's, it's the same people. So I just text them like, hey, Santa. Yeah, of course. But it's like, hey, Santa event, you know, December 9th. You know, and yep, I'm available because I'm booking them in August. Like I book Santa in August. I book my snowcone truck in August, you know, just to make sure that I have everything when I need it. And then I set reminders on my calendar, like every three weeks to, hey, make sure you book this, make sure you have this, you know, find the location because the location changes every year. So those are the, the client appreciation events is where I spend a bulk of my money. The Santa one is about $3,500, but I typically have 70 to 80 people that show up to that. So it's well worth it. The last one that I did, I got two transactions out of it from somebody I had not worked with before because a client invited a friend. So worked out great. Now my Easter one is actually fairly cheap. If I'm like really putting everything together, it's maybe $800. So, but the getting the business and getting the lead generation starting for a new agent that doesn't have any business. I highly, highly, highly suggest the one year anniversary mailer cards and the, Hey, I know you closed. Do you have your closing disclosure? Cause you will need that for your taxes. Like that is like, that is key. People are so appreciative of that. Like they, they really don't even know how to react to it other than yes, please get that to me. Cause I was freaking out about it and I can't go home to my realtor. <laughs> Yo, real quick, this podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that. And and now is a perfect time. I'm great. We're we're interviewing right now in January. So like January, February, that would be a perfect time for you to reach out to all of your past clients, although we hate that term. Yes. Or other people. Or other yeah. people. Well, <laughs> Matt and Allie, I, I do other people. So I, I have, like, I just taught this class yesterday where I was telling the new agents, here's how you go in MLS, find everybody that has closed in a neighborhood that you want to target, pull it up. I don't care if there's 80 people, you're sending 80 handwritten mailers to these people. And you're gonna, like, you're gonna offer to provide them with their closing statement you're going to get that business in the long run when they're ready to either sell or if they have somebody that's looking to buy or sell that they know you're going to be top of mind because you came there adding value. Now my clients, they look forward to it every year. I call them, Hey, happy new year. How's everything going? How was your new year's? How was your Christmas? Whatever. And they're like, great. Did you send the email yet with the alt statement? (laughs) Like, I'm getting on that. Like they expect it every year. Like they know they don't have to keep track of it themselves. So, because I have a lot of repeat referral business because of how I treat my clients and how I stay in touch with them. So it's, I'm doing one right now. We're going on the market tomorrow. It's my sixth transaction with her in three years. As you're, I I hear this time and time again from agents, typically when they're newer or when they're moving into another market where as agents talk and I, uh, this happened last night too. I was listening to some people talk and they were like, oh yeah, this area, that's this agent's area. You know, it's almost like turf wars. Like, oh yeah, we don't touch that area because that area, that agent owns that area. What would you say to an agent that's, that doesn't feel comfortable, doesn't really understand the value that they're giving to those, those clients. What would you say to that agent that is scared of stepping on someone else's toes on someone else's just recently passed uh, client? So everybody wants options. 
you don't know how that person came about to use that agent. It could have been, oh, they're the dominant agent in this neighborhood. That's who everybody uses. People want options. So I typically pull that area up in the MLS and I say, hey, listen, 18 homes sold in that neighborhood last year. The agent that you think dominates that area only sold four. So that means 14 homes were sold by other agents. They don't dominate the area. You're not stepping on toes. And if you are stepping on toes, that agent will be happy to reach out to you and tell you to stop contacting their previous clients, not their current clients. So I do have the agents check to make sure that that house has not been relisted yet. Um, because that's a problem in itself if you are reaching out to somebody that's represented. Um, But I do teach them how to do that. So I actually love that question. I I love when that comes up because when you really look at the numbers and you're honing in on the stats and what percentage of the market share that agent actually dominates, it's very low. It's all about perception. They have the perception that they dominate that area when they don't. Interesting. Okay. You do a lot. Like you have your, your constant contact emails, you're booking Santa out six months in advance. You got Easter, like you're, you're, you're doing a lot. How, what does your organization look like? How are you remembering or what, you know, who is reminding you? What is reminding you? What kind of system do you have in place? My phone reminds me. I put it into my phone. My husband does a good job at reminding me and alcohol actually helps just a little bit just a little bit, but I, for me to, I'm, I'm so excited to do it that it's hard to forget about it. You know, and if I do start planning an event that I start forgetting to do things, I'm like, okay, this is probably a one-off because I'm not enjoying it. And the second you lose interest in whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's, it's real estate event planning, any kind of business, any kind of hobby, the second you lose the interest in it, it's not going to benefit you in any way, shape or form. And it should be dropped immediately. So I haven't had an event yet to where I've lost interest in it, which is great, but I get so excited because I see the looks on these kids' faces. Cause like, dude, my Santa is legit. My Santa is legit. Okay. I think he's Santa. I will not cuss on the phone with Santa. I call him Santa. I don't even call him by his name. When I sent him payment, I addressed it to Santa, you know, like he is Santa. Okay. And the the kids just lose their minds when they see him. And I, I take it a step further with the personalization that when the kid is walking up, I'm whispering to Santa, this is Charlotte. So he's like, hello, Charlotte. And Charlotte loses her mind because Santa knows her name before she's even said her name, you know? So it's just those little touches and the way that people react it helps me stay on point with scheduling it because I don't want to disappoint those kids and the parents of not being able to host that event because I didn't have my shit together. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it makes sense. I have a couple of following questions with organization because you have, you said your phone reminders. You've also already mentioned your calendar. Do you have like, what calendar are you using? Are you the type, do you set like reminders on it, tasks on it? Do you have like a to-do list? Is it digital? Is it paper? I want more. Okay. So <laughs> I have it on my phone to do the, the reminders. I also have the old school wall calendar that's hanging up at home. And I, I write all the events in there. That's where the husband comes into place because he's like, hey, babe, I see on the calendar, you got this on the on the 18th. Are you prepared for your podcast that you're doing? And I'm like, oh, nope, sure not. Got to call Stacy and make sure that I got all this equipment. So it's it's nice to have him there as a reminder as well. But I am very heavily reliant, not only on um, the, the calendar that's on my phone for those reminders, but my transaction coordinator, she is a gem at, hey, Lori, I know you said that you're doing this event because she has two kids. So she is invited to all of them. So she kind of keeps me on top of things as well. Like, Hey, for two weeks when you're doing this, do you want those homemade cookies again? You know, and I'm like, oh crap, yep, but it is in two weeks. <laughs> so, but the the phone is the biggest one, and I do also have an old school little pocket calendar that I carry in my purse to write things in as well. So it's always in front of my face, and it helps that my clients are also reaching out. Hey, I have a question about the event that's coming up. Can I bring a friend? You know, so it's it's not hard to keep track of it, even though it sounds like a lot. But like I said, since the interest is there and I'm so passionate about it, it's hard to forget about the things that I need to do. I wish I had a more in-depth for you. Like I schedule and follow up boss or some crap to like send me a text message like, hey, bitch, you got this event coming up. But 
it's just, it's not that complicated. <laughs> to me, it is. Uh, like I would like client events. Oh my gosh. I would not, I can't even coordinate my own travel itinerary. It's overwhelming for me. So yeah, coordinating for somebody else. Like last night, I was supposed to have dinner with a couple of friends, forgot to invite the friends. That's like kind of important. Yeah, that's anyway. A little bit. So some people that that's <laughs> a lot for them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay. Is there anything else before I switch to the topic of the, the buyer questionnaire, which is the golden nugget that you brought for the, for all the audience? Is there anything else that you wanted to mention before I switch that? I, I would love just for a minute to touch base on is something that's real estate related, but not really real estate related. I know I told you guys that I do uh, self-defense classes for real estate agents because we do meet with strangers all day and you never know what you're walking into or who you're walking into. So I've been training for, I don't know, three years now in Krav Maga and my instructor is absolutely amazing. And yes, I get my ass kicked a lot, but he's got years of experience on me. So it's expected, but I do pull agents in once a quarter and I invite not only my agents, but also my clients to come in and train with me. And we do like a two hour session one-on-one -on -one with my instructor to be able to teach them safety. Cause I, I really cannot stress enough how dangerous this profession can be. And especially if, you know, you're not, you know, your situational awareness is not there or you don't know how to protect yourself or you're doing something stupid, like turning your back to somebody while opening a lockbox. Like you have to be mindful and I don't want to say paranoid, but prepared to just always kind of had that assumption in the back of your head that this could go badly and I need to know what to do if it does. So I'm, I'm very big on the training and making sure that agents that are wanting to can come out and actually train with me for free. 100%. I, I agree with that completely. And I never used to think about the, the potential dangers of going in even just a normal showing to a supposed vacant house there, there's a lot of risk everywhere, especially in today's day and age, plus being female, plus blah, blah, blah. But like, <laughs> and even if you're packing heat, you know, like that can still, anything can still happen there. And, and so plug into like your local title company, or sometimes like even lenders will offer some stuff to other agents, you know, if you're in Tampa, reach out to reach out to Lori. And so there are self-defense classes, Krav Maga, I used to take Krav Maga too. That shit is intense. God, I it. it is intense. Oh I my feel gosh. like such yeah. a badass. <laughs> Yeah, no, seriously, you leave and you're like, who's gonna, who's gonna try something? I'm gonna fuck somebody yeah. up. <laughs> like, seriously, you're, so you I'm like, wait, I'm getting a little bit too aggressive. It. It's like it's somebody, yes. somebody like, looks at you wrong. wrong. Yeah, you're like, I've been trained my whole life yeah, this. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy, but yeah, no, I mean, anything can happen. Like, even in what you think might be a good neighborhood, or if you're own, only farming a supposed good area, safe area, there are crazies everywhere. And it never hurts to take a buddy, whether it's a spouse or a fellow agent with you to a vacant showing or a listing appointment or a, like right now, a red flag of mine, because it happened to one of the agents here in our crew is whenever you're showing a house, if the sell, if the listing agent says, Hey, the seller wants to be there, that is now a red flag for us. And it should be a red flag for everyone <laughs> because you just never know like that, that's that person ended up like very like hitting on this agent, this agent's alone. She's like, you know, beautiful. And, and he was like, Hey, I want to show you like this cliff that I have. It's, it's in the backyard. There's it literally is a cliff. And anyway, anyway, she can go oh. really, really wrong, really fast. You know, like it was, it Sounds was like bad. The I want to show you the basement. <laughs> Seriously. And like, you didn't know, you know, you're going out there to show properties for your out of state buyers, out of country buyers. And it's just another day. Yeah. So pay, I don't know. I'm not really the, the biggest fan of pepper spray just because you can never really, in the heat of the moment, you don't know which way the wind is blowing and that will fuck you up if you get pepper sprayed, if you've ever been pepper sprayed. The same thing with a gun. But anyway, uh, yeah, plug into like, there, there are also just resources and general classes aside from just like actual self-defense, general safety tips of just how to be an agent, yeah. some red flags to look out for. I'm glad you met us. Yeah. Okay. The biggest thing is, is like, don't show property at night. Don't be stupid. Like it's, it's that, it's that meme, the dumb ways to die. And like, don't be that person. Yeah. Don't, don't be like, I, I wish people were more honest telling stories about things that happened to their friends or whatever. I'd be like, Oh my God, it was so scary for them. I'd be like, no, they were a dumbass and they did something stupid and it just backfired on them, but they're okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> like if yeah. people just got called out on it more, maybe they would be more diligent. But you see these agents doing their, their walkthroughs with their phones out in front of their face. And they're like, so here's the house. It's like, can, did you check it first? Like, I, I don't understand the, the need to have so many. And, and first of all, if you're doing that, nobody wants to see your big ass head. Can you move so we can see the kitchen? Like, stop doing videos <laughs> yeah. like that. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Okay, we can move on. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. So, okay, you gave the audience a buyer questionnaire. And yes. it's, what, two two and a half pages. I want to know, my first question on the buyer questionnaire, which everyone can get on theagentgoldmine.com for free. At what point do you give the buyers this questionnaire to fill out? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling, perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much, back to the show. If it is a referral to me from somebody else that I've already worked for, and it's the relationship is kind of already there because I came highly recommended by somebody they know, I send it to them before we see the first property. If it's Joe Blow that reached out to me, just, hey, I found your information on Zillow or realtor.com or whatever, I will provide it to them after the first showing because nobody's going to fill that out if they don't trust you yet. And if you're offering that to somebody and they don't fill it out, that's your first indication you have not built that rapport yet. So after the first showing, you're like, hey, okay, I know you said that you wanted this. You said this house was perfect for you. We go to see it and you hate it. So let's make sure that now we're taking our time and using it wisely. I'm going to send you my buyer questionnaire that'll have all the questions that you can fill out at your leisure. That way we're on the same page and I know exactly what you want and you know exactly what you want. Because sometimes they look at this and they're like, I didn't even know there was an option for an all block home. Like I didn't even know that, you know, I, I wanted to be out of the flood zone. I didn't know that it, oh yeah, it is important for me to be close to my job, you know? So, and I put in there, is it important for you to be close to your job? If so, where do you work? So they, they get to learn a little bit more about their own experience and what they want and what they don't want by seeing this questionnaire. But they don't fully understand what they want until after they see that first home and realize, oh yeah, this is not what I wanted at all. Give that to them at that point. But some kind of rapport has to be built first, either that first showing or somebody referred them to you. I love that the, you mentioned that this was kind of like a part of your screening process because I totally agree with you. Like I used to work with a bunch of investors. Everyone wants to be an investor, right? Of course. Until you send them the investment <laughs> questionnaire. That's Are like, you personally you know, attacking yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, so part of it, like sending them that, you know, questionnaire up front, it's like only the people who are actually seriously are going to take the time to go through, you know, the two plus pages and put the thought into what do I actually want? Like those, it's such a great natural way for you to screen who you want to work with. Yeah. And it's, the other thing aside from that is if they're taking the time to fill it out, they are serious. You know, now it, it could be they just don't trust you yet. So show them something, then ask them to fill it out again. If they still don't fill it out, they're not serious. They're, and you can kind of just keep them as a, a follow-up thing and not spend too much time on them. But it it's a fantastic screening process because it has all the questions in there. You know, are you pre-approved? If so, please attach your pre-approval when you're sending this back with your lender's information, email, phone number, you know, so I can reach out to them. And if you're not pre-approved, are you willing to get pre-approved? Because you know, we're going to have to submit it with offers and stuff. So why not just get it out of the way right now? So it's to be able to provide that information without sounding pushy on the phone, you're just sending them a document to fill out. It's, it's so beneficial and not that normal salesies route. They don't feel pressured. They don't feel like you're trying to, you know, push them into something and it just, it really works well. And that last question on the end where it's like in an effort to have a good relationship during and after this process, share what you expect of me as your realtor. I feel like that's so good too, because right up front, if you can identify what does success look like in their eyes, then you can cater it because, you know, that's a big thing too. It's like, what's important to you as an agent might not be important to the client. And so bringing that to light right up front and then adjusting yourself based on their wants and needs. Hell yeah. Golden. That's why it's called a golden nugget. <laughs> Because it, it really is gold. <laughs> the last section of that one, the about me section for the buyers, that is how I stay in touch with them. 
So I've never had, I'm sorry, let me take that back. I've had one person not fill that out. And I think it's because he was a single guy and he probably was like, my spouse's birthday. I don't have a spouse, you know, like <laughs> maybe I offended him. I don't know, <laughs> but he filled out everything else. So that's all that matters. But I use that last section there for your birthday, your spouse's birthday, your kid's birthday, your pet's name, your favorite restaurant, your favorite sports team, uh, your anniversary, like your wedding anniversary. And I use that as follow-up for throughout the year. And I do it in a way to like a week before the wife's birthday, I'll call the husband and be like, Hey, it's Shelby's birthday next week. What do you guys have planned? And he's like, oh shit. Thank you so much. I yeah. totally forgot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now she doesn't get that phone call because she's been planning it for two months. Like we don't have to worry about that. But the anniversary, I do the same thing. Hey, you guys' wedding anniversary, but I do it two weeks in advance. Hey, your wedding anniversary is in two weeks. What do you have planned? And they're like, oh God, I've been busy. I haven't been able to do anything. Well, don't worry about it. I know your favorite restaurant is Burns Steakhouse. I went ahead and took the liberty two months ago and made that reservation for you guys. It's at 7 p.m. on your anniversary. If you can't make it, all I ask is that you let me know so my husband and I can take, go in your place. And it's shot like, up. cost me zero dollars. <laughs> cost me zero dollars to that, do that. That is so good. That is so good. Yeah, because my instinct seeing this list is like, you know, the average person would be like, oh, your birthday, that means on that day, shoot them a text that says happy birthday. But instead it's like, no, how can I make this actually valuable and not just get buried in the mass of other birthday wishes that happened that day? Yes. Genius, Lori. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but it's, it also, it, I mean, it's kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It's beneficial to me too, because I don't want to send a birthday card to the wife and they get yelled at by the husband because he forgot the birthday and I didn't. So why not send him that reminder? So when the card comes in, oh, Lori, she sent me a birthday card. And like for the kids, the kids get a birthday card and a gift sent to them on their birthday. If they have a dog, the dog gets a, a, a birthday um, biscuit thing, whatever you want to call it. I can't think of the name. Sorry. But every everybody in the family gets something. One more quick little thing that I do, because I, I know we're probably running out of time here. Once we go on... Like, and we're actually actively looking. They're pre approved. I know they're serious. We're getting ready to submit offers. The beginning of the transaction, my clients get champagne glasses. And every milestone, hey, we're under contract, bust out the champagne glasses. Hey, we're past appraisal, bust out the champagne glasses. Hey, inspection went great, bust out the champagne glasses. And then at the closing table, I tell, hey, we're closing. Here's our clear close. Here's our date. Bring your champagne glasses. And then I provide the champagne for the day of closing because you're, you're celebrating with them every single step of the way. And it's, it's just, it's the experience They're They're not paying for a realtor. They're paying for the experience. They're paying for somebody that is actually has their best interest in mind for one, but is also making it something fun for them. That's not just, can you hurry up and buy so I can get paid? I like that so much. And then they're like looking forward to it. You know, they're like, we have these glasses. When, when, when's the next time we're going to drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before we go into the wrap up questions, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you want to, yeah. that you want to think so? Tell us? I mean, I, I think okay. we pretty, pretty much touched on everything that agents would need to know. And also if you're for some reason, a buyer or seller looking and like listening to this podcast, I definitely just raised the bar <laughs> for these agents. <laughs> like my agent's not doing that. <laughs> so you just have to stand out and be different. So I really hope the information I provided will have the agents that are listening to, you know, up their game and be more creative and not just do the same thing that everybody else is doing. Dude, for sure. And like, I've been in real estate for six years now, and there were a lot of tips in here that I had never heard or considered. So listeners will have definitely gotten stuff out of this. Okay, Lori, wrap up question number one. What is your favorite app or tool? So you remember when I told you I'm really bad at technology? <laughs> I don't even have the MLS app on my phone, let alone other apps. So I guess if we're if we're doing tools, probably the constant contact. I really I really like the constant contact. I have a, I mean, and it is a tool, my buyer questionnaire. I love my buyer questionnaire. It's a fantastic tool that I have in my arsenal. 
as far as apps and technology goes, guys, please know I, I got nothing for you on that. <laughs> that's okay. That's crazy. That you don't have the MLS app on your phone. You're still killing it. I do. You know, like, <laughs> I, that's I amazing. Am, yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I, almost 10 years in the business, I've never had it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Aside from the events that you're putting on, what, what other events, conferences, meetups are you going to this year? So I'm actually looking forward to more networking events with other agents. I actually, I took a, an AI training seminar thing that was like three, three days long or something on the internet. Um, it was very helpful to like connect with other entrepreneurs, not just real estate agents in general, but um, that's one of the things I'm kind of leaning into this year is to get more involved in those networking events to meet other people, to hopefully gain more knowledge about what they're doing that I could possibly implement in my business as well, but also to have referral sources. So some of the things I'm, I'm looking forward to this year, it's a lot of out of state agents that are coming in. And one of them, I'm actually going out of state to go to. So it'd be nice to start building referral networks that way. So fun. We're conference junkies. So if you ever want to like, yeah, we can, we can tell you all the ones to go to, but Lori, how can we or listeners help you in your business besides sending you tons of referrals? Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, I, it would be nice if anybody else that's listening to this and they have like their own little golden, golden nugget and they haven't had the opportunity to be on here. I am always open for people emailing me saying, Hey, I got this great idea that I do, you know, maybe you should try it. Like the, the value adds that other agents have that they could provide to me. Referrals are great, but the value adds are going to go a longer distance in your business. Whereas a referral, you know, you get a closing on it, but the value adds, you can distribute across the board to everybody that you're working with. And that's like my main thing. So any value add things that people want to send to me, either DM or otherwise is I'm, I'm game, bring it. Heck yeah. And then where can people send that to you or where can people find you? So I'm on IG. I think it's Lori underscore Sanisari underscore realtor. (laughs) I'm not sure. But if you just, if you just search Lori Sanisari realtor, it will pop up. And little tidbit for the Santa event, I am Santa Sierra. So I definitely play up on my name when I'm doing the Santa event. So that's a good way to uh, remember how to spell my name, Santa. And then that's all you need to type in. I'll pop up. (laughs) It's perfect. And if you're still freaking out about spelling it, just go to the show notes. Of course, all of her contact information will be linked in there. So you get in touch show Lori support, follow her, all the things. And of course, show Allie and I support and follow us too. We are Shelby. Well, we are not Shelby the agent. We're Allie the agent and the Shelby show on Instagram. Hit us with feedback. We always know, want to know how we can improve, who you want on the show, et cetera. And final reminder, go to theagentgoldmine.com to get Lori's amazing buyer questionnaire. And otherwise, Lori, thank you so much for being on the show today. And listeners out there, be a bro and share this show. Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.